this live. We're going to wait a few minutes and see if it goes. I have internet now at home. Ooh, and crazy hair. Hello, everybody. And welcome to Monday Morning Devotions. I just, just got internet at home. So we're going to try this out and see if it works this week. If it doesn't, I'll be back in my car next week. Um, but we are going to be back in Genesis 3 this morning. So um, if you don't know me, my name is Nikki. I am a part of the Potter's House Family Worship Center. And we do these devotions together on Monday mornings to start our week in the right place place. So welcome to my kitchen. You can hear my coffee pots going and we may even be inter interrupted by a few kids, but we're going to dig into God's word together. So if you want to join me, let's open up our Bibles to Genesis 3. Now, I read this portion of scripture a few weeks ago, and I can't get away from it because I think there's some great questions that we can ask ourselves from this book, okay, from this story. And in Genesis 3, verse 1, it says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. So the last time, about two weeks ago, when we read this portion of scripture, I asked this question. I said, who is with you? Good morning, Miss Sharon. I see you're joining me today. But I asked the question, who is with you? Proverbs says bad company corrupts good character. So do you have truth speakers in your life? Do you have people who will love you and encourage you, but will also call you out when you need to be called out? Who will challenge you when you need to be challenged? So we asked the question, who is with you? And today I wanna to ask a different question. I wanna ask you, what voices are you listening to? What voices are you listening to? You see, there are a lot of voices that we hear every single day. There are a lot of voices around us. Voices of hope. Voices of discouragement. Voices that pull out a deep hunger for the Lord. I don't know if you have somebody who when you're around them, you just want more of Jesus and more of Jesus. There's those voices in our lives that just pull out that hunger in us for more of the Lord. And then there's voices that pull out of us anxiety, fear, worry. So the question is, what voices are you listening to? In the book of John chapter uh, 10 verses 2 through 4, it says this, But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Who leads? The shepherd. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of the stranger. In this portion of scripture, we see that the one who leads is the shepherd. And too often, followers of Jesus are not being led by him. We've given the lead rope to the media, to our emotions, to other people and what they say. They determine how we feel. They determine where we go, how we see ourselves, 
what we think. We see in Genesis 3 that Eve listened to the voice of the serpent. She listened to his lies about who her father was, if his word was true, and her identity. And because she listened to him, she didn't just listen, she followed him. Because she followed him, we see the mess that was made because of listening to the wrong voice. So it's it's not just asking, what voice am I listening to? It's also asking, what voices am I following? What voices am I following? It says in this portion of scripture in John 10, a stranger they will not follow. And when you look up that word stranger, it actually means not a family member. It's a foreign voice. It belongs to another. It's an alien. It's an enemy. You know, the Bible talks a lot about receiving godly counsel. And godly counsel is awesome. But hear me, godly counsel. It says that they will flee the stranger's voice. Flee, get away from voices that pull you in the opposite direction of your shepherd. Be careful what voices you allow to counsel you and to shape your view of God, of your spouse, of yourself. Years ago, I was in this group of women and we would hang out together and it was awesome. But a lot of times our conversations would center around negativity about their spouses. A number of them had some um, frustrations with their spouses and whether valid or not, when I would leave that group, I would be so angry at Matt. Now he had done absolutely nothing, but I was angry at my husband. I felt grumpy towards him. And when I would walk in the door, he would immediately be like, what what's going on? You know what's going on. <laughs> and it would cause friction in our relationship. Why? Because I was allowing voices of negativity to speak in to my marriage and shape my view of my husband. And too often we're listening to the wrong voices and we're allowing it to shape what we feel where we go, what we do, how we see ourselves, how we see God, how we see others. So it says, the voice of the stranger, they will not follow. They're receiving godly counsel is good, good, but it's godly counsel. It's pointing us to our shepherd. Remember Jesus, he said, I only do what I see my father doing. In this portion, the shepherd goes before him. So the eyes so eyes are on the shepherd and ears are on the shepherd. That is how you and I are called to live. Eyes on the shepherd, ears on the shepherd. In John 10 verse 27, it says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. My sheep. This signifies relationship and connection. Listen, they hear, they consider, they comprehend, they understand, they learn my voice, my language, my tone, the sound of my utterance. I know them. Again, this signifies the relationship and connection between the shepherd and his sheep, between God and us. And they follow me. Who do they follow? The shepherd. Who do they follow? The shepherd. Not man, not media, not social norms, not what makes sense, not what seems right, not what looks easy, not what they feel. They follow Jesus. There's a key found here in John 10, 27 to hearing the voice of the Lord. And that key is relationship and connection. Um, years ago for fun, my kids blindfolded me and they would just say my name and see if I could guess who it was specifically by their voice. And guess what? I got every single one correct. Why? Because I hear them every single day. I'm familiar with their voice and the voice of God should become familiar, recognizable to us, not ordinary because there is no ordinary or small thing about hearing the voice of the Lord. What a privilege. 
but it should become familiar and recognizable to us because we are hearing it often. We are listening for it each and every day. God's voice should become familiar. In John 10, 28, it goes on to say that the voice of our shepherd leads us towards life, life, life eternal and life abundant. When we listen to the right voice, the voice of our shepherd and godly counsel and people who will point us towards the shepherd, when we live our lives with eyes on the shepherd and ears on the shepherd, there is life found in that place. There is life eternal and life abundant. So I want to encourage you this week to carve out time to listen to the voice of the Lord and even start each and every day with ears open, eyes open. God, lead me. Just start with a simple prayer. God, lead me this week. Show me what you want me to do. Just like Jesus, I want to be about my Father's business and speak, Lord. Speak to me. I am listening for your voice. And as you hear him, maybe you're not sure. Maybe this is all new to you. And you're not sure if you're hearing the voice of the Lord. I encourage you, write it down in a journal and take it to godly counsel. To someone that you respect, that you know has walked with the Lord for a long time and say, I think this is what God's speaking to me. And let them walk you through learning to hear the voice of the Lord. It is, there's just no other way that is better to live your life than to live your life with eyes on the shepherd, ears on the shepherd, following the shepherd. I pray that you would be blessed. You'd have an awesome week. We'll see you again next Monday. Thanks for joining me in my kitchen for studying God's word this morning.